ETC Creo Parametric 3.0 Lesson 20, Part 1. In this lesson, <clears throat> if you look at the, the PDF for it, you'll see that again, we're only given information in a visual form, and then you have to follow the steps or get the steps from the lecture itself. So we're going to create an subassembly and then an assembly, and then combine the two and do some analysis on the valve. We're going to start off by going into the website as we did before, and it's cadresources.com, cad-resources.com. Click on the book, and then in this case here, we're going to select the icon for the valve. Open, and we will extract it. I'm going to just put it in my desktop. You should put it in your working directory. So I will close these. I will select the working directory. And we'll start off with the first part. We're going to make the subassembly the part of the valve, the internal components of the valve. So we'll start off with new. I'll just call it sub valve, whatever you want to call it. And it's going to be an assembly. We can use the default template. Okay, right mouse button, oops, sorry, assemble, and let's turn on the preview, it always helps, and we're going to bring in the shaft first. So right mouse button, default constraint, middle mouse button to complete. And again, let's go over to our options and turn on isometric. Makes it easier to look at. All right, so we have our first model in there, the first component, and I'm going to turn on my datum tags for now. We'll end up turning these on and off as we go. And you do want to turn on your tree filters so that you can see everything. And let's see if that's really something I want to do. We'll see. We can actually change this later if we want to. Say apply. Okay, so the component that's going to be next is the valve itself. It's a thin part. So assemble. Open. And here's an example of what color not to use, obviously, on your models. And I'm going to select, um, you can select your axis or you can select the uh, surface. I'm just going to go for the surface here. Pick that surface. And I can actually swing this around a little bit if I want. i pick the surface here and pick the surface over here. And these are going to be concentric, coincident. And the last one is I'm going to pick the surface that it's going to go up against. You can rotate it or you could filter through with your right mouse button. And that one is going to be coincident. So this is a fairly simple one, little mouse button to complete it. All right, third component will be the arm. Assemble. Arm, open. And again, if you want to move this closer, you can do it not that important. It's a small assembly. I'm going to select the hole and then the shaft and then the face and then the face here that's going to go up against. And in this case here, I don't want it to have, I don't want it to be coincident. I want to have a distance. So we'll move it out. Now, how far should you move it out? If we go up to our, uh, let's try the left. Nope, wrong one. How about the uh, front? That's good. And if I turn off my shading, you'll see where it is. Here's our key seat, and here's the component here. So I'm just going to drag it by eye for now, for our purposes. So it goes almost in the middle. Normally, we would have to put some sort of a sleeve in here or a spacer. 
So again, let's go back over to our standard orientation and go back to shading with edges. <clears throat> so we have two constraints in there and we should put one more in because we've got to orient this to the key seat. So I'm going to select new constraint, click on the key seat here, and then go up and click on the key seat on the opposite side. And this says normal, and we'll make it coincident. See what happens. Didn't like us. How about parallel? That seemed to work. Coincident should have worked, I thought, but this is in the correct place now. If you wanted to go to the other direction, you'd have to turn the whole thing. It's not a big deal when we get it into the assembly. Middle mouse button. Now you can see that particular model is transparent. All right, so save it. And we can close it and we are going to start a new assembly. This is just the valve assembly itself, not the sub-assembly. And let's click on Assemble, and we're going to go for the housing this time. Open. Right mouse button, default constraint. That means coordinate system to coordinate system. Middle mouse button. Control D to center it. <clears throat> so the only thing we want to do right now is we want to put in the sub-assembly. So assemble, sub-val, that's what I named it. And I'm going to shut off all of these datum features. I don't really need them right now. And let's select curved area here. And let's select the curved area on the housing. And let's flip constraint. Let's see, I probably maybe I didn't need to flip it. No, I should not have flipped it. Like so. And next we want to insert it in there. So we're going to select this surface here for the bearing of it. And up on the top here, we're going to come in here and collect this surface. And it is going to be coincident. And we want to do one more. So here's where we're going to turn back on our datum planes. Oh, I accidentally hit middle mouse button. So I just select what I'm working on again, right mouse button, edit the definition of it. And we want to add one more constraint so right mouse button, new constraint, something down the middle of the swivel subassembly, I should call it, and something 90 degrees to it. And we don't want it to be normal. We want it to have an offset angle. And again, you can see, you can rotate it to any place that you wish. for our purposes. Let's go 360. And again, it depends on how you put it in there. So we have three constraints so that we have the third degree of freedom here in the movement. So middle mouse button to complete it. Looks pretty good. Now, we had a couple of things we're going to do here, but I think what we're going to do is we're going to stop and then we'll start the second portion so that the lectures aren't too long.